Hello, hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, Mina, I am the admitted attorney of the High Court of South Africa, and I'm the director of Pescara and Partners. <laughs> I'm just joking. Okay, I'm not joking. But if you're new here, Ikamalamina Busne, and if you're a returning subscriber, thank you for stopping back by. If you're new here, please do click the subscribe button and hit the bell so that you're notified every time I up upload a video. And if you if you are a returning subscriber, thank you, thank you, thank you for stopping back by. So in today's video, we will be doing part two of the law series and basically in some or in summary in this video i'm just going to be telling you guys how you can qualify um to become an advocate or an attorney i'll also try insert some clips or some pictures of the day that i actually qualified um to become um an attorney um, or rather I qualified to become a legal practitioner of the High Court of South Africa so if you guys do want to find out more information do keep on watching and don't forget to like to subscribe and to definitely share this video series if you haven't checked out part one I suggest that you do that before you watch this video so that you don't get a bit confused right so let's get into that okay so at this point you have completed your degree your four-year degree hopefully in record time if not that's still fine and you have graduated and at this point you must have decided whether you want to be an attorney or whether you want to be an advocate so to explain the difference we're all called legal practitioners we're all called lawyers but there's a difference between an attorney and an advocate think about this in the medical field an attorney would be your general practitioner so your GP the person you go to and you've got the flu you know all those things and then the advocate would be the specialist they say he, he or she will be your gynecologist but you need to get a referral from your general practitioner in order to go see a specialist right so that's how it works for now in the legal field and that's the difference between the two so the attorney would be the general practitioner and the advocate would be like the specialist but a lot of the things are changing in the legal practice council so the whole referral route referral route is now going to be um, eliminated there's a lot of so like i said you must have decided whether you want to be an attorney or you want to be an advocate I'm an attorney so when I speak about being an attorney I'll be able to give you guys like practical examples because it's what I am and it's the route that I took I'll also give you the route of becoming an advocate but obviously I'm not going to be able to give you like practical examples because I'm not an advocate but I'll just give you the basic information um, that I've received from my advocate friends um, yeah so like I said the legal practice council is changing like the law society is changing to the legal practice council so there's a lot of things that are a bit new and that are changing but don't worry if you do start your degree now you are studying it and um, um, the the legal practice council and you'll be you'll be you'll know and you'll be told everything that you need to know right so Okay, so I'm first going to tell you the route of becoming an attorney. I'll give you the requirements and then I will tell you how to go about fulfilling those requirements. So firstly, you need to have completed your LLB degree. You need to do a practical legal training course. Um, you need to do your articles for a standard of two years. And fourthly, you need to write and pass your board exams. Okay, so there are two ways you can go about um, fulfilling the requirements of becoming an attorney. The first way is the way that I did it, the first option. So I had looked for articles. Okay, articles are like an internship for attorneys, but you have to do the articles after you've graduated. It's not like many other professions where you have to do 
the internship and then you graduate. With us, you have to graduate first and then um, you qualify to do your articles. Right. So I then um, looked for articles from third year of, of studying multiple articles up until fourth year, up until I completed my degree and I didn't get articles anyway. So what I then did was I did the practical legal training course full time. Like I said, the practical legal training is also in a requirement, but you can either do it full time or you can do it part time. So I did it straight from varsity. I went to do my practical legal training and I did it for six months, which is the full time course that eliminates a year of your articles right you're meant to do two years of articles right but if you do your practical legal training course full-time it's equivalent to a year of oops <laughs> it's equivalent to a year of articles and which means you're gonna only be left with one year so i did my practical legal training i attended for six months um, I was in the first intake, which is from January to um, June, and that's like where they're teaching you how they're teaching you practical of what you've been learning in school. Technically, that's why it's called the practical legal training course. Um, you also have to pass that course, and then once you qualify and you've passed that course, you then left with the year of um, articles and then you also left with your board exams what you can also do is you can write your board exams straight after the practical legal training course so i had that option after i was done with the course i had the option to write my four board exams but i got another job at the municipality and i was slacking and I eventually didn't write it immediately after, which is what you should do. It's advisable that you do that because in the course, they do um, prepare you for your board exam. So if you write the board exam straight after the course, you're still fresh. The knowledge is still new and, you know, but I, that's another story. Um, so... Like I said, you're going to be left with the year of articles and then you're going to, lift, you're going to be left with the um, board exams. What happened with me was I got a job and I just like sort of like forgot and stuff. And the job I got was also because I still hadn't gotten articles. Three months into the job that I was doing at the municipality, I then got um, articles. So then I went on and did my year that was outstanding of articles, right? And then throughout this year, I prepared myself again um, to write my four board exams. I then wrote my board exams and then I had fulfilled all these requirements that were needed. So I had my degree. I did my practical legal training, I did my articles and my four board exams. So I had, quite, I had literally um, completed everything, right? So after you've done that, you then prepare your papers um, to get admitted as an attorney, which now you get admitted as a legal practitioner. So you prepare your papers, your principal, which is your boss, when you're doing your articles, is meant to assist you um, there's affidavits that need to be there you need to include all your things from the time you started um, your degree up until the point where you've written and completed your board exams and you've completed your articles and you've so you need to compile all of that um, to then um, hand your papers to the legal practice council as well as the court to ask them to admit you as a legal practitioner so that's the first way of doing it the second way of doing it is okay so then there's the second option the second option is you've completed your lb degree and then you get lucky maybe straight out of varsity you get a company to take you to do your articles and they take you to do your articles um for two years which is what they mean to do right so while you're doing your articles you then do the practical legal training but you do it part-time because you are 
growing your articles you're working so you don't have the time to do it full time you're going to be attending at night and this is the part part-time course right and it's shorter than the the one that you do full-time then you write your um board exams and you pass your board exams and then um, you do the process of getting admitted. Like I said, you prepare your papers and you hand them to court and you request them to admit you as a legal practitioner. So those are the two ways of becoming um, an attorney. I hope it was clear. I know it's, it gets a bit confusing, especially the way that I did it, but you do have those two options just in case you don't get articles immediately and you do have the money to straight out do the practical legal training course full time then you can also do that option instead of just going and sitting at home and waiting for articles articles that you don't know when are going to come and who's going to hire you and all of those things so if you do have the money um i would suggest that you just go do your practical legal training it eliminates a year of your articles and you know you've just lived with one year and while you're doing the practical legal training full-time you're still looking for articles and hopefully immediately after that you can get um your articles so those are the two ways of becoming an attorney okay so maybe you've decided that you know you don't want to become an attorney and you want to become an advocate so okay what i'll do is in the last part of the series which will be the third video i will be explaining maybe the pros and cons or why you'd want to become an attorney or why you want to become an advocate or why you wouldn't want to become either or so but anyway, maybe you've done your research and you decide that you want to become an advocate instead of being an attorney. So I will be looking down a bit because this is where um, I put down all my notes. Um, so in order to become an advocate, you need to have completed the LLB degree just like everybody else. And then you can join the Bar Council. You can be a member of the Bar Council of South Africa. But you don't just rock up and say, oh, by the way, I've completed my LP degree. I want to be an advocate. Put me on, put me as a member of the Bar Council. You have to um, fulfill the requirements that are required to become a member. So like I said, you need to... Have, so like I said, you're going to need to do your... Completed your LP degree, then you're going to have to do something that's called pupillage. So pupillage is like a training course, or rather, it's like the internship for advocates. So like we have, we had articles, they have pupillage, but pupillage is only for twelve months. It's only for a year, right? And then you need to write your exams. But what happens is you do trial exams in July, and then you write your main exams in um september so you need to have completed your lp degree you need to complete your pupillage and then you need to write and pass your exams and then you can apply to the court like how we do um but in this instance to be admitted as an advocate that's when you can then become a member of the bar council of south africa right there's that first way of becoming an advocate so I've heard that there you can also become an advocate without doing pupillage this would mean that you're not a member you won't become a member of the bar council so it's called the independent bar so the people who don't go via the roots of the bar council they join the independent bar um, okay like I was saying you can straight from school um just um request to be admitted as an advocate without doing pupillage i think you just write the exam that's it but apparently that's not like the safer route because you didn't really get the training that you required didn't do your pupillage and all of those things and you're obviously not going to become a member of the bar but i've heard that like a lot of magistrates or people who are like judges and all of that would automatically after maybe if they no longer want to become magistrates they want to become advocates 
it's safer if you they do it that way because they've had the experience. I mean, you've been a match maybe for the longest time, or you've been um, a judge, so you will have the experience that is required. So it's okay if you do it that way, but um, nobody can stop you if you just want to become a member of the independent bar but obviously for training and experience purposes i i suggest you just go the route of the pupillage writing exams and become a member of the bar council so that is how to become an attorney and that is how to become an advocate okay guys so i think i'm going to end this video here just so that it's not too long in the third part of the series which will be the last um, part i will be um telling you guys about um say you didn't um meet the requirements like we spoke about in part one of the series you didn't meet the requirements to um study law or you don't get accepted to study law so which route you can take and then i'll try explain the roles of an attorney and the roles of an advocate so maybe it will help you to decide which one you want to be i'll also just in general speak about the profession and what is expected of us and how it's like and then you guys will have like an all-rounder or rather all around the information of um, how to become an attorney and the route of becoming an attorney so in that way you guys will have all the information that you need to know on how to become a lawyer basically um, I hope everything is clear and I've explained everything clearly if not you can ask me like questions down in the comment sections section down below and i'll be very willing um to help you and to answer all of that anyway guys thank you so much for watching this video please do not forget to like to subscribe and to definitely share this video bye